Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, uh, now named Arcane MTG, and today we're going to do our first video, which is a guide to your first pre-release. Uh, we decided to do this because the Throne of the Old Drain pre-release is coming up in just about a week, um, and we thought this is a good way to get started. So the first thing you should know about pre-release is what it actually is. So as I said, it happens about a week before the set's out, and it's sort of a way for new players to well, not new players, new and old players to get used to the new set and test it out in a couple of decks against each other in a sealed event. It's kind of a more casual event, which means that uh, it's a great place for new players to go for their first time. It's where I first went. And it means there's a bit of a friendlier attitude as it's not really as competitive because no one really knows what the cards do, which means you're kind of on a more even playing field with other players. And it's generally just very fun. The second thing you need to know about pre-release is what you get and how much it costs because then you can work out if it's good value for money. Um, in the UK it generally costs about £25 which I guess is quite expensive for what you get but part of what you're paying for is the experience and to be honest I think it's worth it. Um, so what you get is you get one of these pre-release packs slash boxes. Um, inside here you'll get six packs of whatever set it is so in this case it was War of the Spark you'll get a spin down die, one of these, which is a good way to keep track of your life. Um, and they're kind of cool, you can get a very all different colours and they'll have the set symbol on them here. And the last thing you get is one of these, which is a promo card. These can be any of the rares in the set. So in this case for M20 I got Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Um, they are rares up to Mythic, so for example this one is a Mythic. They're a shiny card and they are date stamped, so if you look in the corner here you can see that this pre-release occurred 6th to 7th of July 2019. Um, and these are really cool cards, they're worth a bit more money and it's just a nice addition. You can use any of these cards in your deck, so you can use the cards from the pack or you can use your rare, which is also kind of cool if you get one that fits with your deck. But don't necessarily feel pressure to use this card because obviously it might not fit, but either way it's cool. The other thing you get, I guess, is the box itself, which for newer players can be useful to store your cards in. It's certainly useful to store any cards you don't use in during the event, such as your side deck. Uh, sometimes it comes with a little divider, and as you can see, I've kept mine just to store some, store some cards in. Um, once you've built your deck, the structure of pre-release is multiple rounds, so in my local it's sort of between four or five. Um, of best of three. So if you've only played an arena it will be like best of three and therefore you'll get to use your side deck so you will get to side against your opponent's deck. Um, sometimes that can be really useful, sometimes it may not be depending what cards you've got. Um, because you can use all of your cards in a pre-release you can actually completely change your deck. So if you have time you could build two decks um, as long as you use the only cards you've got in this kit. So that's pretty cool. Next up we've got the things you should bring with you. Now, one of the reasons pre-release is so good for new players is because you don't really need to bring anything with you. Um, generally, stores will have a lot of this stuff, and to be honest, just bring a good attitude and you'll be fine. That said, this is what I suggest you bring. So number one is some um, basic lands. Probably bring more than just this five, but bring a variant of all of the lands because you don't know what deck you'll be building. But that said, your store will probably have some available and you'll probably be able to borrow them if need be. The next thing you should bring is a couple of dice. It doesn't ha necessarily have to be a spin down. Normal D6s would be fine, but I bring a few because a lot of mechanics can be complicated in Magic, and this is just a good way to keep track of things on the board. So like, say something's plus two, plus two, you can just put a dice with a two on top of it, on top of that. Um, some kind of counters would also be useful or anything like that. This is also useful for life if you don't want to use the one that's included in your kit. Another thing I'd bring personally is some sleeves. Um, you're going to get some brand new cards and make a 40 card deck. I just think it's nicer to have sleeves, it's easier to shuffle, um, and you're protecting your new cards. You, the worst, last thing you want is for them to just get gunk on them or something while you're there. Um, so I'd suggest bringing some sleeves, or you'll probably be able to buy these at the shop, um, although they might be a little bit more expensive. So these were only £2, so it's fine. But um, yeah, and support your LGSs, to be honest, buy them from the shop. The next thing I'd say to bring is a playmat, sort of for the same reason, in that you want to protect your cards, um, so bring a playmat. It doesn't matter if it's not like a magic one, for example, we used to play Yu-Gi-Oh, so for a while I was bringing a Yu-Gi-Oh mat, but now I have got my nice magic mat here, plain, so if you can't tell, <laughs> white is my favourite colour. The next thing I'd bring, if you have any, is a binder with some trades in. Um, 
You don't have to bring this by any means, but pre-release is a new set, so people will have new cards and they'll be more willing to trade. Um, so if you've got one, might be worth picking it up. It also means if you haven't played much with other people in real life, you'll get access to other cards. You might be able to trade for more um, things that you need, or you might even be able to buy cards. The fourth thing you should know is sort of some general advice for deck building. Uh, you make a deck of 40 cards out of the six pack and one promo that you've got. So remember, you can use your promo. Um, in general, I would say with a 40 card deck, I'd use somewhere between 14 and 18 lands, depending on what your depending on what type of your de deck you're playing. If you're playing something that's more aggro and lower cost, you can probably be closer to 14. Or if you're playing something that's more controlly and involves some bigger cards, then I'd go closer to 18. Or if you're playing mid-range, or to be honest, if you're just unsure, play about 16. Um, and actually your mana base is one of the most important parts of your deck and trying to figure out what the best way to run that is, is kind of key. Another thing I'd say you should probably do is do a little bit of research before you go. Try and look at, say, some videos on YouTube. Um, I'll try and link some down below that I think are good for the upcoming Throne of the Elk Drain pre-release, but I'm sure most big channels will have done a video on them. Um, and what they'll do is they'll tell you a few of what they think their favorite cards are or the, the bigger bombs are. Um, and they'll also suggest, say, the stronger color pairs, because usually by the time we get close to pre-release, we've had spoilers for most, if not all, of the set, and we can kind of guess what the better color combos will be. But that said, even if you do do all this research, don't be bound by that. Don't go with, okay, I'm definitely going to play blue-white flyers when I go there. Because to be honest, your packs, you're going to get such a vari like a, a variation of cards that you're not necessarily going to get what you want. And your, that may not be the best deck for your card pool. Someone might say that green-red is really bad, but actually for your packs, it's really good. So play what looks the best from your cards, what can make a most coherent deck. And that is the other important thing, actually. Try not to just get lured in by your rares uh, and try and play all of them and then end up with a deck that doesn't really work, even though it has these rares in them. I know that can be really tempting because it's these new shiny cards that you haven't played with, but the deck that'll win will be the one that's the most consistent. So try and build something that has an overall theme and fits together. And if you can get a few of your rares in, then brilliant, that's perfect. Another key thing to remember is that you actually do have a sideboard at these sealed events. Um, all of the cards that you got in your card pool initially, you're available to play. So don't just build a deck, shovel your cards together and put them back in the box because actually some of them might be useful. So it might be useful to put the cards that fit into your mana base to the front and then sort them by ones that might be more useful in certain matchups. Um, I know like in the last M20 release there were cards that had protection. So obviously you want to put those in um, and you may get some other good sideboard cards. Okay, that's pretty much it for our general guide on what you should bring to your first pre-release. Um, and to be honest, my key advice is just go with a good attitude and try and have fun. Um, this is one of those events that's so great for new players because it's a really friendly environment, no one really cares, everyone's trying to have fun, um, and it's a great way to sort of get to know your the place where they'll be hosting FNMs, and ms um, and a good place to sort of get to know the mechanics of the game a bit more if you've only been playing on Arena, because as you'll know, playing with real cards is very different. Um, but you won't be at too much of a disadvantage. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you liked our first video as Ar Arcane MTG. And if you liked this, uh, please like and subscribe. There'll be more videos upcoming with more guides. Um, perhaps we'll talk about our favorite cards before the pre-release. Um, but we'll let you know. Thank you.